<laughs> Kobe ladies and media day becoming kind of a thing now. Is that is that part of the gig? If you're gonna roll with Kobe, you gotta be willing to go do the media rounds. I'm, everybody knows this is a queen of chaos. So yeah, you need you need a queen to help you share the the weight of the crown. It's very important. It's a little extra work for you to do this relationship. It's got to be tough for you, right? It's got to be tough for him. Are you looking at me? It's got to be tougher for him. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, Kobe, November 2nd, Madison Square Garden, Kamara Usman. I mean, there is not another fight on the planet that makes sense. So what is going on? Why, why is it taking so long to get this fight officially booked? You tell them why. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I already gave the verbal yes to the UFC that, you know, that I want to go to Madison Square Garden and make it great again because, you know, the Knicks have tarnished the legacy of Madison Square Garden. It's disgusting what they've done to that arena. Just nothing but L's. So there's only one man that can go to Madison Square Garden and make it truly great again. And that's yours truly, the people's champ, America's champ, Donald Trump's favorite fighter, Colby Chaos Covington. Sign the paper, Marty. Stop faking injuries. Stop ducking me. You know, this is a joke, man. This is getting out of hand now. You know, people are excited about the matchup because you guys have a very similar style. You've got a very similar resume. I wonder, I mean, you had some common opponents. You just be, you know, a legend in Lawler. He's got the Woodley victory. I mean, when you look at the, the resume side by side, who do you think brings the better accolades in? Uh, no doubt about it, me. He, he's a D2 level fighter. You know, he's a DT level college wrestler. I'm D1 and everything. I, I'm, I'm the top of the food chain. He's never going to see the top of the food chain. So, you know, I, I don't even know why we're talking about him. You know, his his losses to Jose Caceres, you know, a guy I beat the shit out of. So, you know, Marty Fake News, man, he's been ducking me in the early part of his career, and now he's doing the same thing again. He's ducking me. So, you know, uh, our resumes don't stand the same. You know, I beat a lot of better fighters. And, and if you look at his resume, all his resume is guys that are washed up that I took their souls. He fought Damian Maia after I left Damian Maia for a pool of blood in, in Sao Paulo. He took RDA after his soul was defeated for letting Brazil down again. So, you know, he hasn't done anything that I've done yet. Everything he's done, I've already done it, and, and I did it before him. So, you know, he, he's an afterthought now. He's, he's second place to the best fighter in the world, Colby Covington. You definitely earned the fight. I'm curious, why did you go to Anaheim? I mean, there was no real need for you to have to be there, right? You had to travel all the way across the country. So what was the logic behind He likes to rustle up tail feathers. That's why he <laughs> likes to do that. <laughs> Well, you know, the thing is, is that I was over in Hollywood, you know, I was staying in Hollywood for the week. I went to Showtime. We we're doing a little documentary series. I went to Food Truck Diaries with Brennan Schaub. I was hanging out with my boy Joe Rogan over at the comedy store, listening to Joe Rogan shoot some comedy. So, you know, and then Joey Diaz as well was out there. I was, you know, having a good time with him and, you know, just enjoying California, enjoying my victory tour. I love the lead up to the fight. I love beating people's ass in the fight. And then I love post fight festivities. And speaking of that, I need to go work on some cardio soon. I got a five-round title fight coming up. I need to go get my cardio in the bedroom. We'll he has really short. good endurance, so. We'll keep it short so you can go work on that. The crowd reaction there, I wonder. I mean, listen, yeah. you're not doing this necessarily for cheers. You're doing it for money to mm -hmm. take care of. But, I mean, does that ever get to you? We're like, Jesus Christ, people, how can you hate me this much? I love it, John. Did, were you in the arena at USC 241? Oh, yep. Did, did anybody get a bigger pop that night? No, it Dude, was you. The whole entire ring was singing together, and then mm -hmm. and then thousands of fans were lining up to take pictures with me after that. I mean, I'm getting people emotionally invested, and that's something that none of these other fighters can say. People love me or hate me, you will tune in to watch me. You will get a feeling from me when I'm in a room with you. So, you know, that's that's what these fighters don't do. You know, they're they're out there busy saying, oh, I'll fight whoever Dana White puts in front of me. Nah, I, I'm different. I'm out of the box. I'm not in the box with all these other jobbers, all these other marks, you know. I, I'm one of my own, and I'm unique. So what I bring to the table, you know, I'm giving these people an entertaining show, and, and I know they had fun over the weekend. They can vent their frustrations at me. Yeah, no question. If for some reason, Usman's not ready. Are there other fights that make sense? I mean, a, a, a Nick Diaz, a Nate Diaz, a Conor McGregor. You know, I'm talking about those big money type names. If for some reason he can't be ready, would you accept other fights, or is this title or nothing right now? I would accept other fights. I, I already have a title, John. This this is America's title. This is the people's title. This is the most distinguished belt in, in the UFC today. So, you know, whether it's Nick Diaz, whether it's Nate Diaz, the journeymen who are barely 500 level fighters, you know, they, they have stocked and slaps, but they ain't ready for MAGA bombs. You know, those guys have speech impediments. You know, they, they don't know what wrestling is. They they have lisp in their in their voice. So, you know, whether it's the Diaz's, whether it's my best friend, whether whether it's Marty Fake Newsman, this belt will de be defended, John, November 2nd in Madison. Square Garden because that's what Donald Trump wants. I know a lot of people like the Usman matchup, including myself, because you guys, the cardio that you guys both have, the wrestling that you both I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Do you see similarities between your two games? 
No, I don't. I don't see any similarities. I, I do everything he does, but I do it better. So, you know, he. The thing is, is he's tried to follow my blueprint his whole entire career. You know, he doesn't have the wrestling accolades, but he's tried to to follow everything I've done in my wrestling uh, game plan and, and in my fight career. So, you know, the thing is, is like I told him on the set, if I made a sandwich tomorrow, he he'd literally go find a way to make that sandwich the same way. So, you know, you're gonna find out when we get locked in the cage that there's different levels to this, and I'm gonna expose him for the weak glass chin that he has, for for the no heart that he has for the, just the coward that he is in general. And, and I'm going to do it for all the wrath of the immigrants. What would it mean for you to be champion finally? I mean, no, you had such a hard road to get here. You know, things taken away from you, hurdles put in between. I mean, what would it mean for you to finally have that undisputed belt, you know, on your shoulder, around your waist? What, what would that moment be for you? Uh, it would just be another day it. at the office. Yeah. You did it. We did it, you, you know? Did it. And that's what we've been doing. This is undisputed. This is undefeated right here. So, you know, it, it would just be another day at the office. It wouldn't be a big deal, man. I'm getting calls from the president. I'm going to the White House, only fighter in the history of the sport of MMA that's ever went to the White House and hung out with a sitting president in the Oval Office. So what would it mean to be undisputed UFC champ? I mean... Well, I don't know. It would just be another this. day. Born for this? Born for I, this. We expect it. You know, <laughs> when you do something that you already know you were going to do, I mean, it's, it's really not a big deal. I'm doing bigger things. Once you get that accomplished, tell me where you go from there. I mean, are you are you a champ champ guy? Are you a money fight guy? Do you want to be use your platform for politics? I mean, what, what do you want to do once you're undisputed UFC champion? I, I want to be champ, champ, champ. I want to be first ever. I, I, you know, I'm already breaking all the history books. You know, last fight, most significant strikes ever thrown. You know, first family front row call from the president. I want to be a champ, champ, champ. I can go down to lightweight and I can go up to middleweight. So I'm looking to fight Whitaker. He's a bum. He's got no. He's got no wrestling. He's got no heart, no cardio. And then Khabib, come on, man, the sheep lover. He, he's got nothing for me, man. The guys, the guys over in Russia, you know, playing with with sheep. You know, like what's he gonna do to raw American steel and twist the sex appeal? So. I got a lot of things on the plan, but I also want to give my platform to the troops because without the troops, you know, we wouldn't be here today. You know, they, they sacrificed their lives for our freedoms and opportunities so I can go chase gold. Mm -hmm. So big shout out to the troops, all, all the service men and women. And, and also, the, you know, a big my platform is also for politics, for, for, you know, for the best party in the world, the right party, you know, make America great again. Donald Trump's favorite fighter, you know, the, the Trump family, they are making America great again. You, you can look at the facts, man. Unemployment's the lowest it's ever been, you know. Um, you know, the jobs, we have more jobs than there's ever been since the 60s. So our economy's booming. So you man, you can hate the man. No one's perfect. No one does every single thing right. But, you know, you need to respect what he's doing. And he's putting America first before his own life. All right. So well, hopefully it all goes down November 2nd. I know that's what we're all hoping to see. I'm sure you played this fight out in your head, man. You've been waiting for this moment. Like I said, you guys have been lined up for a long time. So how does this fight go down? How do you get it done? First round knockout. He, he's getting put to sleep. I promise you that. He's leaving that octagon in a stretcher. I'm putting it out unconscious. I couldn't train my last fight for Robbie Law because I had a cut on my eye. Wait till you see me with a full training camp, John. Anybody that wants to doubt me, they're going to find out November 2nd. I will knock him out first round.